Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Lecture number 29. This lecture is dedicated to environmental consideration in natural dyeing. Now slowly we are advancing towards what are the major approximations and conditions that we should follow while doing natural dyeing. Most polluting synthetic dyes. The textile sector is thought to be the greatest source of colored wastewater. The textile manufacturing industry is one of the most polluting industries in the world. During the drying process, around 10 to 15 percent of the color used are released into the polluted water. So, along with many other chemicals that are used as auxiliary during the wet processing of textile, 10 to 15 percent is just the dye. High quantities of textile dyes in aquatic environments smoother the recipient of the water's reoxygenation capacity and block sunlight, disturbing aquatic life's biological activities as well as aquatic species or algae's photosynthesis processes. Because of their long term persistence in the environment, deposition in sediments, notably in fish and other aquatic anim animals, living creatures, gradation of contamination into carcinogenic or mutagenic compounds and limited aerobic biodegradability. Dyes can damage the aquatic e environment. So, you see that why this pollution of so many types of chemicals in the wastewater can make so much of a difference, because when it is run into any aquatic body, the flora that is surviving in the water body, its photosynthesis like algae's photosynthesis gets hampered and other biological activities of the aquatic animals and plants get very, very disturbed and particularly fish and other frogs etcetera. And this can cause contamination in the water which can eventually lead to carcinogenicity or mutagenicity and therefore, they are highly damaging to the aquatic environment. Synthetic dyes and environmental impacts. Synthetic dyes do not only harm people, even more so they destroy the environment and thus also people all over again. The biggest problem is that synthetic dyes need a lot of water to be produced and applied on the cloth. At the same time, the chemical waste of those factories is often just dumped into the rivers. So, what is happening? All the waste water as it is they are using lot of water and then all the waste water along with chemicals and auxiliaries and dye, what is remaining in the dye bath is dumped in the rivers or nearby ponds or water bodies. Where large dye factories are, we see the effect more dramatically. The water in the rivers have color of the dye the factory produces that day. The soil in which people grow their food becomes toxic 
as they use the water for farming. The rivers are now dead as fishes and plants cannot survive the chemicals that the factory dump in the rivers. So, it is a very serious situation where the condition of the nearby water bodies is very drastically deteriorating. The reason for this is that most of those factories are located in China or India, countries that have weak laws to protect nature. But that is not entirely the fault of those countries. They need to make sure that their protections for workers and the environment are weak, so they can attract the companies that produce the dyes as laws that protect the environment and workers are expensive for the companies. Most of the clothes we buy come from those countries and because of that we can enjoy cheap cloth and do not have to worry about the harm these cheap products cause to people and nature. In order, in other words, we say we import the t-shirts, but we export our pollution. So, what is happening is that because of low uh, you know labor charges, because of weak laws, all other countries are opening their warehouses in India, China, Sri Lanka and these places where labor is cheap and where laws of are not so stringent. As a result, they try to exploit and all the dirty work or the dirty waste water and wet processing of textile is done in these countries. As a result, all the damage that happens to the environment are in these countries and the product and its benefit are actually taken by the other countries the advantage. Seriousness of pollution created by dyes. An average t-shirt consumes 16 to 20 liters of water during and after the dyeing process, implying that the worldwide textile sector releases 40,000 to 50,000 tons of dangerous chemical in the water every year. It is a huge quantity. The biggest environmental damages created by the textile mills are those generated by the wastewater discharges, effluents into the water courses which typically account for 80 percent of the total of the total emission generated by this textile industry. So, just textile industries effluent is so large. Imagine that what an impact it is going to have negative impact on the environment. The textile manufacturing industry is one of the most polluting industries in the world. During the dyeing process, around 10 to 15 percent of the colors used are released into the polluted water. To reduce pollution emissions from the textile sector, dyes and auxiliaries chemical must be used sparingly as much as water in the current setting. So, both the chemicals and the water should be used in balanced quantity in lower quantities. So, there is less waste generation. How to prevent toxins from polluting the environment? Now, this is a very, very serious issue with textile wet processing effluent and we need to take a very serious look at this because after all we have certain social responsibility as well. The following approaches hold a lot of promise for attaining these goals using natural colorants for dyeing in place of synthetic dyes, utilizing alternative environmentally acceptable auxiliary chemicals wherever 
auxiliary is required. Now, if for example, metal mordant versus bio mordant enzyme or rare earth mordant. Obviously, the latter three are much safer as compared to the metal mordant and is also used in larger quantity. So, the bio mordants like enzyme are used in 0.2 to 0.5 percent. The rare earth mordants are used in 0.4 percent, whereas the metal mordant is used in 4 to 10 percent. So, utilizing an alternative environmentally accepted auxiliary chemical is a very good idea. Fabric pretreatment to reduce auxiliary chemical usage. That means, if we can do plasma treatment or if we can do electron beam irradiation to the fabric, we can actually eliminate the metal mordanting step and can make the surface accepting the dye in a more facile manner and there is there would be no need of using mordants any longer. Use of plasma electron beam technology for surface modification is the need of the hour. Enzymatic textile processing to, re to reduce auxiliary chemical use is also a very safe alternative. Upgraded technology in wet processing is what is required urgently to be developed and some of the developed ones must be practiced. Moving on, then how does textile dyes affect the environment? Now, let us also understand the chemistry. What when we say it is damaging, what is it that is damaging? The biochemical and the chemical oxygen demand that is BOD and COD, impairment of photosynthesis, inhibition of plant growth, entry into the food chain, recalcitrance and bioaccumulation and potential for toxicity, mutagenicity and carcinogenicity are all considerably compromised by textile dyes particularly synthetic dyes that we are talking about. So, if it is harming the environment, if, if it is increasing the BOD, COD, if it is impairing the photosynthesis, if it is inhibiting the plant growth, if it is entering the food chain, then definitely we need to look at it very seriously because these compounds can be mutagenic or carcinogenic. What is the impact of natural dyes on our environment? Natural dyes are non-allergic, non-toxic and biodegradable. They have a far lower environmental impact than synthetic dyes. If they are treated in a way that eliminates the use of hazardous chemicals throughout the dyeing and finishing processes, that means that if we try to adapt natural dyes, a lot of these above mentioned problems can be mitigated. But we have to handle these compounds also very carefully. We have to use the mordant in a very rational manner, in a rationing manner and we have to use water also very uh, scarcely. Impact created by synthetic dyes. What are the harmful impacts created by the synthetic dyes to our environment? Air, water and soil pollution are all results of fashion industries creation of synthetic garments and synthetic dyes. Glycol ether, detergents, combustion gases and reactive material are all released during the manufacturing of synthetic clothing by the textile industry. What impact can dyes have on human health? Red 40, yellow 5 and yellow 6 may have cancer causing chemicals as pollutants. Food dyes have been shown to contain the probable carcinogen that is benzidine 
और फोर एमिनो बाइफिनल एंड फोर एमिनो एजोबेंजीन सो दीज कंपाउंड आर एक्चुअली कॉल्ड एज रेड फोर्टी येलो फाइव एंड येलो सिक्स दे आर बेसिकली फ्रॉम द एजो सीरीज ऑफ डाइज एंड वी ऑलरेडी नो दैट इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी सिक्स German brought a ban on these azo dyes because that was for the first time that these dyes were identified as carcinogen because the n double bond n breaks into primary amines and those primary amines are basically carcinogenic compounds synthetic dyes and public health synthetic dyes are dangerous in different ways they pollute the drinking water and the field we grow our food on factories dump from their chemical waste into rivers causing a lot of this pollution these factories are usually next to large water bodies like rivers or lakes because making and using synthetic dyes takes a lot of water therefore the factories become a threat to these water bodies and to the people and animal that live near them because the poisoned water is unsuitable for drinking growing food or raising fish for example and now you see on the right hand side there is a picture where they are showing how these dyes are washed and how they are how these people are exposed to the dye uh, from every part of their body how dyes harm the environment and human health you see these are all factory waste which have been run out into the nearby water bodies and this is how they are showing that they are contaminating the soil the air and the water bodies in a very drastic manner so they harm the environment and the inhabitants who are living near that place when we try to move from synthetic dyes to natural dyes or when we recommend to move there has to be certain environmental benefits some key environmental benefits of natural dyes include they are fully biodegradable which means that they will eventually degrade naturally when you see with when you use with them uh, your use with them has finished without releasing any nasty toxins in the soil or environment so at least one aspect of natural dyes is very well understood and that is they are biodegradable and when they are biodegradable they can actually take care of not accumulating in the environment they are made without any toxic chemicals natural dyes are made fully from sources such as plants and insects and mineral which makes them non toxic to those who are exposed and they don't release harmful by products in the environment like other synthetic dyes so since the manufacturing process is not there it is only the isolation of the natural dye through extraction hence there are no toxic chemicals that are used during the process of extraction you have seen that most of them are extracted in a very safe manner they are hypoallergenic which means they are less likely to cause any allergic reaction when skin is exposed to them this is ideal for those with sensitive skin condition such as eczema as well as for babies and children who have soft skin now what does this mean that it means that in every aspect if we compare synthetic dyes with natural dyes there is a huge lot of difference in terms of their toxicity in terms of their biodegradability in terms of their 
you know, uh, reactivity to human skin. And therefore, natural dyes are recommended even for children wear and baby wear. They are as safe as that. Several environmental conditions, natural dyeing involves the use of dyes derived from plant sources, minerals and insects to color textile and other materials. Time and again we have been talking about the sources of natural dyes. They are, there are only three sources, plant, animal and insect. And to a large extent, it is the major leaf, the plant sources, just a handful of animal sources and a handful of mineral sources. While natural dyeing is often considered more environmentally friendly than synthetic dyeing due to the renewable and biodegradable nature of the ingredients, there are still several environmental considerations that we need to keep in mind even when we are using natural dyes. So, what I am trying to draw your attention is that natural dyeing needs to be also taken very seriously. Not that every natural dye and every way that it is extracted is the best way and is the most environmentally friendly way. We have to keep certain points in mind if we want to keep the environmental consideration in the mind even for natural dyes. Plant sourcing. The sourcing of plant material for natural dyes should be done responsibly. To avoid over harvesting or contributing to habitat destruction, it is essential to choose plants that are abundant and preferably grown sustainably or sourced from waste streams such as food waste. So, repeatedly I am telling that there is no scope for agronomical intervention of natural dyes. We cannot use our farms where cash crops are grown to grow natural dyeing plant, because there is already a lot of natural dyeing plants available as forest waste, as temple waste, as kitchen waste and many of these ways are abundantly available. So, therefore, we need not use our farmland to grow these plants, but we can use and we can collect from these places like temple, forest, where it is just shed off, it would just decompose and before that decomposition, if it is collected, then it can add value. Water usage. Natural dyeing typically requires a significant amount of water like any other dyeing process, both for extracting the dye from the plant material and for dyeing the textile themselves. Efforts should be made to minimize water usage through techniques such as water recycling, and using low water immersion dyeing methods. So, here again the idea is to cut down on the water usage and because water is used in two different processes that is the extraction of the dye from the plant material and the dyeing of the cloth with natural dyes. Therefore, we should see how we can optimize the usage of dyeing. Now, in that case, many of the dyeing machines that I mentioned in one of the lectures where we were discussing dyeing machines, we should go for machines which have lower m by l ratio, 1 is to 4 or 1 is to 3 to 1 is to 5 kind of machines having that kind of m is to l ratio will be most ideally suited in the current times. Although natural dyes are environmentally benign, we have to also take into consideration energy consumption. 
while natural dyeing generally requires less energy than the synthetic dyeing processes, energy is still needed for processes such as heating water or dye extraction and maintaining dye baths at the correct temperature. That means that we have to not only take these things very seriously because water, chemical, energy consumption, chemical additives, waste management, these are major issues with synthetic dyes and their management. Henceforth, if we are opting for natural dyes, we have to keep in mind that the energy consumption is also low. While natural dyeing generally requires less energy than synthetic dyeing processes, energy is still needed for processing such as heating water for dye extraction and maintaining dye bath at the correct temperature. Using renewable energy sources can help reduce the carbon footprint of natural dyeing. So, therefore, we should use room temperature dyeing kind of technique or waterless dyeing where we are using lesser amount of energy. Chemical additives. Some natural dyeing processes may involve the use of mordants or other additives to improve color fastness or facilitate dye uptake. It is important to choose mordants that are less harmful to the environment such as alum and iron and to minimize the use of potentially toxic substances like heavy metals, chrome and copper. Now, if we do this kind of balancing of the requirement vis-a-vis -vis what is safe, then we can choose the correct chemical additive. Waste management, proper disposal of dyeing wastewater is crucial to prevent pollution of waterways and soil. Because we have seen in the case of synthetic dyes, this is a major problem. Effluent containing natural dyes may still have an environmental impact, so it should be treated or neutralized before being, uh, before being released into the environment. Techniques such as phytoremediation, where plants are used to clean the contaminated water can be employed. So, somehow if we are using a metal, a metal mordant, we have to see first whether we can optimize that metal quantity. If we can optimize the metal quantity, that is the best option. If we cannot to get a particular shade, then we need to somehow either you know uh, recycle that metal or recrystallize the metal salt and reuse it in some manner or use phytoremediation technique where the plant or any other biotic material can adsorb these metal salts and then it they can be recovered from that subsequently to, re, to recycle. So, eco friendly dyeing techniques have to be adapted. Eco friendly dyeing techniques involve the use of non toxic biodegradable and renewable materials that have a minimum impact on the environment. Natural dyes are derived from plant based sources such as roots, leaves, flowers and fruits. These dyes have been used for thousands of years, but their use declined with the introduction of synthetic dyes in the late 19th century. Now, in the past or in the very early times of civilization, there were only natural dyes. There was no synthetic dyes. It is only the, uh, uh, the synthetic dyes were invented in the late uh, 19th century. 
that is 1896, the first synthetic dye was manufactured. Before that, everybody was using natural dye. So, plant based dyes were already known, but they were not being used in that quantities. So, people did not have to worry and the population also was very low. With the growing population, with the growing demand of food crop, with the growing demand of clothing, this dyeing textile you know industry started booming and in order that it was booming, it started kind of spreading lot of em uh, environmental pollution. In the beginning, it went unnoticed, but gradually when the soil, the water, the air started getting contaminated, people started falling sick, it was then noticed and stringent rules were laid down by the pollution control board. So, the development of eco-friendly and natural dyeing technique is driven by the need to reduce the environmental impact of textile production as well as to meet the growing demand for sustainable and ethical fashion. So, it was only after a long time that it was realized that something wrong is happening in the environment. People started investigating what is going wrong and then they found that the dyes that they are synthetic dyes that are being thrown away as uh, waste from the factory, the water that is being disposed into the water bodies, people started noticing that the fishes in the pond are dying. That is when they realize that it is harmful for aquatic life. A lot of testing, a lot of study, a lot of research went into understanding what was going wrong. And it was then thought of that this environmental impact has to be reduced, which is being caused by textile production. Consumers are becoming more and more aware of the impact of their purchases on the environment and are seeking products that are made with eco friendly and natural materials. So, now people are selling their garments with labels saying this has been eco friendly produced, which means that they have, they have tried to look into the negative impact of the dyes, the disposal of the dye has been done safely, the water of the dye bath, waste water effluent has been treated and then run into the water bodies and not otherwise. Plant based natural dyes are harmless. Eco friendly dyeing techniques include using plant based dyes such as indigo, madder, turmeric, and so many dyes we have seen in the earlier lectures, as well as natural moderns such as alum, iron, and sometimes and very in small quantities, rarely copper. These materials are non toxic and biodegradable and they do not produce harmful waste products. Copper cannot be included anymore in this category even though it is used in very small quantities. The use of eco friendly dyes also reduces the amount of water required in the dyeing processes as these dyes require less water than synthetic dyes and we have seen that how when we were developing the processes of natural dyeing for cotton, silk, wool, jute, bamboo, the na natural fibers and the synthetic fibers polyester and polyamide that is nylon, everywhere we were trying to minimize the chemical quantities including the dye molecule which is derived from nature, auxiliaries were reduced and water was reduced. The ML, M is to R ratio 
was tried to keep as low as possible. Natural dyeing techniques involve using plant based dyes that are derived from renewable sources. These dyes are produced using traditional methods that have been passed down for generation such as use of natural mordants to fix the dye to the fabric. Natural dyes produce a range of beautiful colors that are unique and vary depending on the plant source, soil and clim climatic condition. So, there are large number of beautiful colors that can be obtained and you have seen in the last few lectures some of the dyed swatches have very bright colors. So, the myth that you know natural dyes give earthy colors, they are dull, they are not very attractive is no more holding good because we have been able to isolate colorants from 55 new plant sources which had remained untapped and because of that now there are a vibrant colors that can be obtained from various plant sources and these plant sources are all renewable. We do not destroy the plant, we only use the parts which fall off or wither away and we use that for value addition. Environmental impact, one of the challenges of using eco-friendly and natural dyeing technique is the consistency of color. Natural dyes can produce a range of colors, but they can be difficult to reproduce consistently. Well, even this myth we have overcome because we have now developed standardized and optimized processes for natural dyeing where a recipe just like the recipe that is followed in synthetic dyes has been developed. And we have also come up with Indian standards to identify and verify that they, these dyes are from natural origin. However, this can be overcome by using standardized methods and testing the dye before using it in production. So, every time we are sourcing the natural dye, if not from the same source, or even if it is from the same source to check what is the dye content and the recipe that has been developed can be actually then uh, recalculated according to the dye content of the current product, uh, product of the natural dye. In conclusion, the development of eco-friendly and natural dyeing technique is an important step towards reducing the environmental impact of the textile industry by using non-toxic, biodegradable and renewable material. We can reduce the amount of waste and pollution produced by the textile production. The use of eco-friendly and natural materials also meet the growing demands for sustainable an ethical fashion and helps us to protect our planet for future generation and that is what is meant by sustainability. Because if we keep on using synthetic dyes which are made from petrochemicals, by 2050 petrochemicals large amount would be gone. So then how do we get colorants? Now is the time that we should start focusing on natural dyes because in nature plants will always survive if we keep the environment safe. If we keep on polluting the environment even the plants and trees and water bodies all will die away. So, we will neither get dyes from microbes like algae, bacteria, fungi nor from trees nor from small plants nor from the insects because everywhere it will be all full of toxins. So, we have to restore our planet for future generation. 
environmental impact analysis of Bartik natural dye using life cycle assessment. So, now the only way to understand that what is the environmental impact, we have to do a thorough life cycle assessment of the dye and the dyeing process. The use of natural dyes for Bartik dyeing is fewer than synthetic dyes because its limitation in the application such complexity in manufacture and usage. For ease of use, natural dyes need to be processed into instant products. Extracts of natural dyes are generally produced in liquid form that are less practical in long term use because since they come from biotic origin, they get fungus or they get uh, deteriorated by the bacteria of the atmosphere. So, we have to have a good shelf life for these natural dyes. Dye powder obtained by drying the liquid extract using spray dryer is the best option. Production processes of liquid natural dye is simpler and requires less energy, but need for more energy for transporting. It is important to know which type of natural dye should be produced based on their environmental impact. So, we have to keep carbon footprint in you know in mind. Liquid dyes are easy to prepare and then the same liquid dye when it is subjected to spray drying requires it is an energy in intensive process. But once it is spray dried, it is now safe and will not be attacked by the atmospheric microbes. So, the shelf life increases. If we are going to use it immediately, then there is no point problem in using the liquid dyes. But if we have to store it even for one or two days, there is a possibility of that dye getting deteriorated and the enzymatic action of uh, the dyes, uh, the, the enzymatic action of the, uh, the microbes can create enzymes which will deteriorate the colorant molecule. Production process of liquid dyes is simpler as I said, but then the transportation charges are higher. So, we have to optimize the whole process. When we look at the LCA that is the life cycle assessment impact of powder and liquid natural dyes, then we will have a better understanding what kind of environmental impact it will have. This research aims to compare environmental impact between liquid and powder natural dyes and also to find relative contribution of different stage in the life cycle of to total environmental impact. So, when we look if I tell you liquid dye is not good and uh, you know powder dye is better, that is not all. We have to do a life cycle assessment LCA that speaks for itself. The appropriate method to analyze and compare the environmental impacts of powder and liquid natural dye is through life cycle assessment that is LCA. The cradle to grave approach used to assess the environmental impact of powder and liquid natural dyes of Jalave Rind throughout production process of natural dyes, distribution and use of natural dyes in coloring batik. This is one particular source of natural dye which was studied and this particular natural dye is being used in batik printing. Results of this research show that powder natural dyes has lower environmental impact than liquid natural dyes. It was found that distribution, mordenting and packaging of liquid dyes have big contribution to environmental impact. Why? Because one thing is that they get spoilt very easily. Other thing is that more amount of mordant is to be used and they leave behind a bigger 
environmental impact. So, unless and until we do a life cycle assessment, we cannot come to this conclusion that whether a powder natural dye is better or a liquid form of natural dye extract is better. Natural dyeing process delivers environmental benefits. Micro based dyes have been shown to be scalable, cost effective and significantly less harmful than traditional chemical dyes. So, now dyes have also been extracted from microbes. The end result promises to be hugely positive for both the textile and fashion industries as well as environment. And these micro, ba micro based can be you know the technologically, biotechnologically you know they can be produced in large quantities in small area. So, color, colorifix was established to help textile dyeing factory save on raw materials and reduce their carbon footprint by moving towards naturally sourced high performance colors. The concept which came from the University of Cambridge spin off centers around using microbes to produce color. Up till now, we were only talking mostly about the plant base or the insect base or the mineral base. Only very fleetingly we were talking that there is a possibility to get colorant from microbes. Now we are also understanding why microbes based natural dyes are coming or becoming more important and more popular because it was a revolution an idea which revolutionized the whole natural dyeing process. This revolution was mainly because microbes can be grown very fast in small area by technological and biotechnological intervention and large quantities of dyes can be obtained in just couple of hours. Whereas, if we take plant parts, we have to take 10 kg of plant part to get 2 percent to 5 percent dye only from that 10 kg. So, if you look at the convenience of a regular plant vis a vis microbe, the microbe produced dye is much easier to extract, to you know propagate and to get the colorant from them. Microbes will naturally make secrete and fix pigments onto surfaces. What we did was to figure out a way of doing this in a scalable way. So, the researcher from the Cambridge spin off company mentioned this that you know all they wanted to do was to scale it up to show that it is doable. Environmental problems caused by textile industry. The most important environmental problem of the textile industry is linked to the garment dyeing process during which synthetic dyes are used which if on one hand give the garment in a very vivid and long lasting color, on the other hand they pollute and the risk of being harmful to the consumer. So, the dyeing process also has a strong environmental impact because it is water intensive, large quantities of water are used which can become dangerous especially when disposed of as they come into contact with a series of chemical substance including various types of dyes, microfibers, mordants and auxiliaries. So, all put together this synthetic dyeing industry was definitely more you know and causing more environmental impact because it was using more water and the disposal of the waste whether it is the effluent or the solid waste was equally difficult and 
ha was having a negative impact on the environment. Therefore, there is a big role that Greenpeace plays. A solution to this problem has been bought, sought for many years by rediscovering natural dyes, recycling certain substances or investing in new technologies. However, innovation is expensive and complex and for this reason not everyone finds right means to make changes in their production plants. In 2011, the pioneering organization Greenpeace launched a process of accountability through Greenpeace detox camp, a campaign designed to raise awareness of brands on their environmental impact, ask them for transparency along the supply chain and make consumer aware of the dangers of fast fashion. Because worldwide this problem was increasing. It was time to take an action and the action that was taken in 2011 was through this organization which is called Greenpeace. Greenpeace then launched a detoxic campaign, detoxification campaign, where they started questioning the big companies about and they also started raising awareness to the brands, big brands about Im environmental impact. And they laid down certain stringent rules for them that fashion can go at very high speed, but environment cannot be compromised. Where does the problem arise from? Unfortunately, the disposal of wastewater is not always adequately regulated. Wastewater can be toxic due to the substances used during dyeing, which do not dissolve in contact with it. Azo dyes can be used at low temperatures, making the colors more vivid, but in certain situations they can break down and produce carcinogenic amino acid because as I told you a while ago, N double bond N can break reductively and can give rise to amino compounds. Aromatic amines which are generated are carcinogenic, which can also cause huge environmental damage and that is the reason why German ban on azo dyes came into existence in 1996. In several countries, the sale of garments containing materials that could be potentially produced or that can potentially produce aromatic amines is prohibited. The German ban was implemented not only in Germany, but in the entire of Europe. They only they initiated it and it has also been banned in India. Even if in any case, small percentages of them can be found in the fabric. So much so that it is such a stringent rule that azo dyed fabric needs to be identified, tested because any dyed fabric could be azo dyed fabric because they give brilliant colors. Now looking at the fabric one cannot say whether they have been dyed by a direct dye or a dispersed dye or uh, acid dye as the dye only gives the color. Whether it is from the natural origin or synthetic origin, only the testing method can tell whether this is an azo dye or a whether this is a natural dye or whether it is a dispersed dye of another kind. So, zero discharge hazards chemical and reach were then introduced. Greenpeace detox camp campaign the fashion world had begun to understand the problems caused to the environment by the textile industry and has therefore begun to look for solutions that could lead, that could limit to the impact. In 2011, for example, six brands planned a campaign response through the ZDHC, Zero Discharge Hazardous Chemicals program. The ZDHC 
response to the need to create a recognized standard so that all companies can comply with one goal to integrate sustainability to the management of chemicals. We have already talked about ZDHC program here. The ZDHC differs from REACH. REACH is registration, evaluation, authorization and restriction of chemicals, a regulation drawn up by the European Union in 2007, which serves to protect human health and the environment from the risk and chemicals. While the ZDHC is a protocol that companies can adhere to on a voluntary basis and therefore has much more restrictive criteria, being compliant with REACH is manda mandatory by law. So, this registration, evaluation, authorization and restriction of chemicals has to be followed in a very strict manner. ZDHC is a is a protocol, is a way of life that has been shown to these textile manufacturers. Exploring different alternatives and already natural dyes have been discussed in great details, low impact details which are eco friendly have also been suggested for looking for alternatives to make the environment safe. Other alternative for saving the environmental impacts are digital printing, upcycling and second hand fashion. Now, second hand fashion also is becoming very, very important because the same dyed garment can be recycled and redesigned and therefore, there is no need to make new garments. So, how can the coloration process be made sustainable? Fundamentals of textile dyeing processes must be kept in mind, environmental issues of dyeing processes must be followed and ecological alternative for dyeing processes must be practiced. So, environmental consideration we have already done in our developed processes, I will not get into the uh, details of that. Nebulization technology is also one of them which has been practice we will talk about at a later stage and this is how the nebulized dyed denim jacket looks like and smart foam technology also is one of the technologies which is used for dyeing where less water is used and this is how the machine of the smart uh, foam looks like and this is on the right hand side is a garment which has been dyed with foam and it looks very even very little of water is used in both nebulization dyeing machine as well as smartphone machine. So, there are advantages of nebulization and foam dyeing machines and both of them use less water. So, keeping in mind the environmental consideration and the impacts of the metal modernes, we have moved from enzymes, uh, we have moved from metal and uh, modernes to enzyme and bio modernes and therefore, we have to finally find a solution for sustainable fabric production. The paradigm shift in the textile industry is that less and less of effluent should be used and natural dyeing should be done under these conditions where environmental benefits, recycling, reuse of textile manufacturing should be practiced. With this, we have come to an end of this chapter. Thank you. Thank you.